Hi, I'm Stevie C and the Boys to Be, and I've been asked to repair these LED power cans. These are RGBW capable units, they're branded U-King, they're marketed as 200 watts, although I've measured them to be closer to 120 watts, and they're available from Eboo. These particular ones have been in service since the first lockdown, and they're only starting to fail now, so let's get into diagnosing and hopefully repairing them. So in my experience, this is a pretty typical example of the failure mode of these. Several of the LED sources have gone out at once. So these are the individual LED sources. Stevie, note for the edit, shoot one in close-up. What happens is you have four LED sources on one chip, red, green, blue, and white. These are individually connected in series with the corresponding colors on the other LED chips. So just like a set of fairy lights, if one goes out, all the other colors in that sequence go out. So there's a couple of different ways to find the faulty chip. So firstly, with the power disconnected and the digital multimeter set on diode continuity mode, I'm going to probe around each LED in sequence. A healthy LED will light, whereas a failed LED will not. A failing LED may light dimly or display leakage on the meter. Sometimes, however, I have to resort to method two. Here, I turn the LEDs on at an extremely low level, either with the DMX or the built-in dimmer. I'm going to set the meter to DC amps and swap the probe into the amps setting. Measuring amps isn't the actual important thing, I just need a pair of probes I can short LEDs with. By bridging the suspected faulty LED, it forces the rest to light. This wouldn't happen if I selected the wrong one. Now that I've identified the rogue LED chip, I'll mark it with a sharpie. Seeing as these are SMD LEDs, logically I should probably use an SMD rework station, but I've not found any YouTube tutorials showing the correct way to desolder multi-pin or multi-color SMD LEDs on a heatsink PCB. So this video is probably more of a how to maybe not do something tutorial. I can't use my trusty Antex XS25, as being a 25 watt iron, it can't pump heat out fast enough as it gets absorbed by the aluminium cored PCB. Under normal operation, the heatsink PCB draws heat away from the LED chips and towards the cooling fan. In the past, I've used a domestic clothes iron in a bench vise with the PCB balanced on top. This raises the background temperature of the heatsink PCB, which allows the Antex to come in and make the solar joint as normal. This method has the obvious disadvantage of damaging the rest of the LED chips if the clothes iron is too hot or kept on too long. Cunningham's Law states that the best way to get the right answer on the internet is not to ask a question, it's to post the wrong answer. So, correct methods in the comments, please. The first thing I'm trying is using the SMD heat wand to raise the temperature of the PCB. It's starting to get quite toasty. Use the scientific method of touching it. Obviously the heat's starting to melt the actual LED itself, but I'm not bothered because it is a duff LED after all. Then I'm using the Antex iron to apply some fresh solder to the LED pins, then using a screwdriver to slowly and gently pry the pins from the PCB. Oh, that was scary. So now, time to clean the pads off. Got a little bit of damage to that pin there. Again, this is how not to do this, so. So I'll hopefully remember to show a close-up of this, but there's not much in the way of heatsink compound on that. Hang about. Come on, tell it, you bastard. Thank you. Now it's just a case of tinning the pads if necessary. 
selecting the new LED chip and orientating it correctly, applying some heatsink compound for improved thermal transfer, soldering one LED leg, then applying pressure to align it with the PCB and reflowing the pin, then soldering the other three pins at that side, then repeating for the opposite side. See, it's easy when you've already done it and you're recording the voiceover. So I got away with part of the PCB trace lifting. At this point, I think it's fair to ask past me to explain to you the problems he had with an LED trace lifting completely off the board and how he dealt with it, i.e. he used a bodge wire. So what I've been doing with this one is I've been using the heat pen, which is asleep at the moment, to raise the temperature of the PCB, at which point I can use the Antex iron to lift the LED off. Except I had a bit of a problem in that one of the tracks lifted off and that's why you'll see a bodge wire. But the good news is the LED is working, as I shall now demonstrate. Got the power into it, I've got the dimmer up. There you go. If I get a bit impatient, I resort to clipping out the LED, then continuing to desolder the pins left behind. It's just a case of cleaning off the pads and hoping they don't break. That's probably far too much heat sink compound, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. Can that work? Oh Jesus! That's far too bright to look at. So in this one, we've got more than one colour out. There's this group of six that don't have red, blue or white. So what's the odds that it's all the one chip? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Right, so this one is making the whites work. Eh? That's not connected to anything, why is it? No. Ah, uh, I see what's happened. That's B camera. That solar connection has sheared. Explain why pressing down is this making the connection. There's nothing wrong. Is this the white? Is that a duff connection as well? Yeah, do you know what? I'm just going to re-flow this one. If there's nothing wrong with the chip, there's nothing wrong with the chip. I bet you this has been caused by a wide free solder. Chat amongst yourselves while this heats up. That is the first time it's been the same LED responsible for all the colors being out. But then again, it just wasn't connected rather than being blown. I did slightly melt that, but once the diffuser's on, you won't notice anything. Observe. You never know. 
So here we have an intermittent fault this time. The song remains the same, however. I'm just going to short each in turn to find the faulty one. So it's this one. That's clearing the fault. So here's this intermittent fault again. Well, it's not intermittent, but eh, anyway. If I just press on that, it's just... See that? Just lift it off. B-roll. I promise this was not a fix. See, just flapping about in the breeze there. So I refoed the offending LED and then had to refoil the one next to it. And yes, I replaced the heatsink compound. And I've just been testing it only to discover that none of the white ones work. You can probably see them all flickering away in here. So that's two out of the three fixed. We have red, we have green, blue, two segments of white. So that was actually one of the ones I reforward. We have white. Yay! So we've got an intermittent fault on this and we've got two out, which is just as lucky because I've only got two chips left. Midway through this project, I took delivery of a higher power soldering iron, so I'll use this for the next parkan without raising the PCB temperature first. I'm confident that an 80 watt iron, which is what this is, will supply adequate heat to the LED I'm trying to desolder while not being overcome by the LED heatsink. Let's find out if I'm correct. You call that an iron? This is an iron. I've like said I don't like these stands. So the quickest method so far seems to be clipping out the faulty LED with a pair of snips. Not much in the way of heatsink compound on these things, is there? Then using the high power iron to clean the metal residue off the pads, then using a regular 25 watt iron to mate the new LED to the pads. Perhaps I should try the iron method again. So I'm not used to how this feels in my hand. It's a bit, it's not that, it's not as practical and nimble as the other one, let's put it that way. But it is making short work of removing the old LED because obviously it's got a much higher wattage and a much higher thermal mass. Mm. Yeah, I've come and got through here. Red. Green. Blue. And white. Something I've noticed about these LED chips the uh, this little layout of the LED sources is different inside. 
I'll show you what I mean in close up. So in the old style, the white source is in the center with the red rainbow around the outside. Whereas in my replacement chips, they're in a sort of a, a square cell formation. It's quite weird. So as you can see, that's all the LED power cans repaired and doing their thing. You could argue that as the LED chips are all the same age and probably all from the same batch, that the other ones will start failing soon as well. It may be the case that the LEDs that have failed were somehow defective and prone to failing quicker, or that some LEDs didn't have enough heat sink compound applied at the factory and so were more likely to suffer heat damage. The only way to know for sure is to get them back out in use and maybe do an update video in the future. So if you enjoyed this project, and particularly if you want to see that updated video in the future, like, share and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.